Amen. Glory to God. So we will start now. In the Philippines, we are singing Bahala Na. It's a slang word, Bahala Na. Uh, sorry for our Asian friend. I know, I know, I don't know if you hear the word Bahala Na. But in the Philippines, we always say that Bahala Na. Especially when we're not yet Christian, Bahala Na. But when we're Christian, we always say that we need, right? But the word Bahala Na, the originally, the original word of that is Bahala. Right? Uh, as they go on using it, they become, it becomes Bahala. So, now you know, if you don't know yet, the word Bahala comes from the word Bahala, means God. So if you say the word Bahala, Bahala na ang God. Amen? Amen. Bahala na ang Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, Bahala na Holy Spirit sa word. It's God's will, it's the Holy Spirit's will for His words to speak to each and every one of us, including me. Amen? Amen. I'm not using any paper, any anything besides this, this one because I would like to, to convey this message out from my heart, talking to you as a father, talking to you as a father and sisters, not from my own strength, but by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yes. So let's offer this short prayer. Father God in heaven, we Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with the identity of the Holy Spirit. We praise you, we thank you that we gather here together to praise you, to worship you, to offer our thanksgiving, and to hear your words. Holy Spirit, we invite your holy presence in the midst of us. Manifest your presence. Manifest your gifts and truths. And the very person of the Holy Spirit that is of us. Give us your wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. We hope and pray that we can grasp something today that we can put in the rich part of our heart and we can use it as we wait for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, we glorify your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. According to statistics, I know I don't know if I cry, but According to statistics, during this month of winter, or winter is about to come, people were depressed, right? Right, I saw some Canadian were depressed. They started to depress, feel depressed because it's winter time again. They will stay mostly at home. Man, so many people, I know what's the number, but many up to, up to, committing suicide because they're so depressed. That's why I hope and pray that this word of God will give you motivation, will give you uh, will help you, help your Christian life to go on. Amen? Because the, the, the song that we sing a while ago, the battle belongs to God. It's not yours. Amen? So the title for this Short message of God is the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. Let looks at let, let's look at this. Uh, one of the uh, scripture or one of the verse as we read the scripture one ago in First Corinthians 15 7. It says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So imagine. The victory is free. And eh? gives us the victory. So this is a, this is freely given to us. This is victory is given by the Lord Jesus Christ to us. You know, victory comes from battle, right? There's no victory without battle. So how can you declare victory if you don't have battle? But this victory that given to us, I hope you perceive it, that this victory is given to us, bring it, the battle that we didn't fight. Amen? We didn't fight this battle, but we have the victory. That's why Paul emphasized, thanks be to God. Because God gives us the victory. But what's up is word? Always 
uh, appreciate the Lord too. Through, not your own effort, not your own strength, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Read the, uh, perceive again the word Lord. Maybe Paul can write uh, the Holy Spirit to just impress Paul. Oh, write right, the word through our Jesus Christ. But no. The Spirit impressed the Paul. Write the word Lord. Why? Because if we only be receiving the victory if we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our life. Amen? Usually we acknowledge only Jesus Christ as our Savior. Right? But we forget, or we tend to forget, that Jesus is Lord. That's why the name of this church is Jesus is Lord. Amen? Because Jesus is Lord. Amen? So, we must give thanks to God because He will give us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. What's the message last Sunday? We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors through, there's the word through, right? Through the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, what are those things that Jesus Christ overcame already? What are those things that Jesus Christ conquered already that Paul said, thanks be to God that He gives us victory? We will study the Word of God and all the messages of God will be taken from this context that we read a while ago. In verse 56, the highlighted word there, the sting is of death is sin and the strength of sin is the Lord. This is uh, a, a, a connected uh, statement. Connected to each other, like an equation in a math, in a in algebra, an equation or a formula. It's related to each other, right? The sting of that sin and the strength of sin is the law. So if you read it normally, sometimes you will not understand. But by the by the help of our spirit. The Holy Spirit will help us understand today. So, what we can do now is remove the word law. Remove law. So, let's go back, bring it back forward. So, because the, the statement said, the strength of sin is the law. So, what if there is no law? What if there is no law? So, there is no sin, right? So, what if there is no There is no death. The state of that sin is the state of sin is the law. If you remove the law, there is no sin. If you remove the sin, there is no death. Because the Bible said, the wages of sin is So what if there is no sin? There is no death. Right? It's very simple. Amen? So this is that Jesus Christ conquered when he said in the cross, Almost 2,000 years ago, it is finished. Meaning, he conquered the law, he conquered the sin, he conquered it. Amen? We are living under grace, not under the law. Imagine if you're living under the law. And one law you break, the equivalent punishment is cutting your finger. Right? What happened? If you committed ten, if you break ten laws, you don't have finger anymore, right? But because of the grace of God, He didn't abolish the law. Law is just a mirror. He sum up the law. And the summation of law is love. Love the Lord your God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Amen. So we're not living under the law, but we're living under the sin, under the grace. Sorry. Under the grace of God. Amen? So that's the first Jesus uh, comfort the law. He gives grace instead of law. 
Because no one can perfect and you know. The Bible said if you commit one mistake, you commit all. You break all the law. Imagine that. That's why you think the grace and this grace is so big beyond your imagination. Amen? What what thing, whatever thing he conquered sin. He conquered the sin. Amen? How he conquered the sin? It's very simple. Because sin usually uh, originated from our selfish nature. Are you okay with that? It is our selfish nature, that's why we commit sin. We focus on ourselves. We focus on the of, of, of the desire of our body, of the desire of our soul, our mind, will, and emotion. That's why we commit sin, right? Look the word sin. What's the center letter? What's the center letter, church? I. That's why mostly, generally, sins originated because of I, me, myself. Right? Because of yourself is our selfish nature. So let's take, for example, one common sin. The sin of pride. Look the word pride. What's the center? Are you preparing for death? 
Do you prepare a, a tray for writing me? No? No. But in the Philippines, there's a person prepare his tongue. Uh, I know him. I do. Ali Serrano prepared this tray many, many years ago. Eh? Do you prepare your tray for writing? You didn't even discuss about that. You care your body. You always fear your body. You expect that if you have a flat nose like me, you want to be minded. Right? If you have a, a big bill or a belly, you want to be cut. Oh, is your concern of your body. Amen? You're not discussing about death. This body is perishable. Do you know? Do you, you know? You perceive or you understand that you have expired date? You have a shared life. You have a shared life. Amen? You have a shared life like uh, for all of FC. Shared life. We are perishable. Amen? That's why don't be too much concerned with your physical body. The world said we live in this world, the world of the living. You hear that? The world of the living? But in reality, we are the world of the dying. We are all dying, church. We are all dying. That's the permanent thing. We all die once. But don't be afraid of death. Because Jesus said, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hates, where is your victory? Hates means another translation of death. It also means great. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hates, where is your victory? Death to the enemy. Because the enemy sometimes that way. They are afraid of death. They are afraid of death. The enemy said, no, 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 no. Swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? No more. I am victorious. You know what? When battles, temptation arises in our Christian walk, don't fight it to be victorious. Fight it from victory. Amen? It is finished. So we're fighting from the victory, not to have a victory. From victory, because in the first place, we are victorious already. We are overcomers already. We are preparing now. We are more than the after all. Because you know what? Greater is he that was in you, that who is in the world. Amen? Amen. That is just an acronym, my brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. What's the acronym of death? You still, you still remember? Departing, eternity, abandoning all towards heaven. There's two choices. Heaven. Okay, there's two choices. <laughs> Maybe you're asking me, Pastor, why are you still committing sin? Why are you still committing sin? Do you ask that to yourself, right? Do you ask that, but why do you have a right to be in sin? I'm not a slave of sin anymore. I'm dead to myself anymore. But I but why am I still committing sin? Very simple question. A very simple answer with this hard question. What's the answer? We choose to. Right? It's your choice.
facing is not your trials, it's not your battles, it is the law of God. Just name it, I am victorious, I am overcomer. Amen? So, this is sort of the best final victory in the future. That's why the author of this uh, Bible, of this particular passage, uh, put a subtitle, Our Final Victory. This is the best is yet to come. This is the best to come that we must expect. Expecting is not ideal. Expecting is working in the ministry while waiting. It's not, I stay at home, I do doing nothing. No. Waiting is working patiently, steadfastly while waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the final victory. Let's all bring together. 3 to 1. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the And one day I hope every one of us, 
facing the world, facing the Lord one day, and congratulating each and every one of us, singing to us, is the great whisper, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen? So what we do now? What we can do now waiting for the Lord? In first Corinthians, the last verse,
Simple logic. Amen? How can I know your words that I cannot say who you're working? I'm not telling that you're working, you're working to please men. You're working to please God. Amen? It's your dealing with God. Amen? Perceive that of our sisters. Because there's a promise. If you come faithful, if you're persevere to be faithful up to the end, and they expect us to know about abounding and knowing that your labors are in vain, there is a promise to the faithful church. And I know you believe this in the faithful church. We are the Philadelphia church of this generation. Amen. Amen. And that's the promise of God in Revelation 3 10. Because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you at the hour of trial. This is the Jacob's trial. This is a great regulation. The seven years of regulation. That's the promise of God. I will keep you at the hour of trial. which shall come. About to come. This is the most yet to come. The great regulation. The 21 judgment shall come upon the whole world to test. This is designed for the Israelites, for the hard headed Israelites. So they will be saved. To test those who dwell on the earth. But what if you will left behind? You will suffer the great tribulation, seven years of suffering. While the church will be called up in heaven and enjoying there with the bride, experiencing, experiencing the great supper, the great marriage of the Lamb. And in heaven, as my brothers and sisters, we must be the faithful church of this generation. Amen? Amen. Hearing those words, hearing those encouragement, hearing those truths, or maybe convicting you. I hope there is a female word for you today. Amen? That's why we can say boldly, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's all stand and let's all give the best glory and honor thanksgiving to our living God. Let's all give the best love of our living God in one way Therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And no! I am with you always. And not only that, after the gospel, the word of God said, teaching them to obey what I am commanded to you. Christ is the first of promise. Lord, I am with you even unto the end of the age. Amen. And if you are right now, if you are that person that facing tribulation right now, facing trials, facing circumstances of life, even facing strongholds, facing iniquity, facing bondage, facing addiction, fragments. Hey, brothers and sisters, it's time to battle. The battle was won already by the Lord Jesus Christ. Fight the battle from victory. Claim that. Claim that wherever you are right now, if you are a person of word, claim the word of God, that you are victorious, that you are conqueror, that you are under power. True, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your problem, your trials, whatever they are, they are not the one that separates us from the love of God. No one that separates the love of God from us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. My brothers and sisters, if you want to grow, Thank you. 